Hello there, I am Tyler Bryden. It is June 15, 2018. Uh, I'm excited to be here. June has just been flying by, uh, and I'm trying to continue this habit of putting out videos, putting out content. I've been uh, pretty uh, critical about it, uh, about putting out content in the past. I've really viewed it as sort of, uh, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. Uh, everyone's doing it, so I have to do it as well too. Uh, but I've struggled with the, the, the platforms and mediums that are, are so popular in today. Uh, of course, I'm, you know, of course I'm on Insta, all this stuff. But I just really struggle to break up my day putting out those posts. And so I've really tried to focus uh, on a channel, a medium that works for me, something I'm happy to do, and uh, and be able to get out my thoughts, get out the the things that I'm thinking and hope to get out in in an easier way that, that fits the way that I like to approach things. And uh, so I've got the, you know, the video working here, but I've also got uh, the audio file. And I actually set up a system so when I take that audio, upload it to my site, and actually pushes out to iTunes and actually uploads as a podcast. So it's been pretty cool to see a uh, little iTunes podcast uh, up there. I called Tyler Talks. I made that up on the spot. I got nothing real, uh, really planned for it or anything special, but I do want to put that content out in that. Uh, people struggle to find the time to engage in content, especially video. We're always hustling. We're always on the move. And I've seen it in my in my own life, this big switch from con consuming content, whether reading or consuming video, uh, and actually shifting over to audio. So when I'm at the gym listening to a podcast, listening to an audio book, and I've really found that that that's engaging, it's a great way to consume content, uh, and it also fits with the lifestyle uh, that a lot of us are, are living now. Uh, but I did have a topic I wanted to talk about today. I know there's a ton of stuff going uh, going on in the news, uh, but I'm gonna stay away a little bit from that today. And what I actually wanted to look at was uh, an article put out, uh, it was actually put out by Barry Weiss, who uh, is uh, is a journalist. Uh, this is a picture of her here, she often shows up on Bill Maher. Uh, she put out an article in May talking about what is now known as the intellectual dark web. Uh, and it's a really interesting uh, movement that has started, um, and it has been around the the conversations that have emerged, especially in what people are calling this, this post-truth era. And uh, a lot of people are a little bit confused about what this intellectual dark means, who these people are, but uh, this article originally put out by Barry Weiss has, has uh, built quite an amazing conversation online, uh, one that a lot of people are contributing to, um, some people positively, and of course in this internet, in that age that we're in, a lot of people negatively as well too. But. First of all, I just wanted to define a little bit about who these, you know, who are these people? Uh, what is this intellectual dark web? Uh, I actually have, uh, <laughs> this is where part of it started, was uh, this website called uh, intellectualdark.website. It had a list of uh, all these um, people who were part of it. You can see it's down now. I don't know if it's ripped through traffic and so many people are going to it or someone, uh, some higher power has uh, destroyed the site. I'm not too sure, but this is really where it all began. Uh, but there's, um, there does seem to be a common definition and I just wanted to read this off. This is actually from a, a Medium article here. What is, you know, the, the article says, how to join the intellectual dark web, uh, a user's guide. And, and really this idea was um, formed by Eric Weinstein here, uh, who I think made it as a joke, but that joke, um, that joke had some consequences, obviously. And, and so this guy, this, this guy here, and, and what a lot of people have tried to do is actually provide a definition for what, um, what the intellectual dark web is. And, uh, <laughs> and the reason is because there's been such a, a wide um, spectrum of who these people are and who they've been classified. And so you might not know some of these people. I don't fully know everyone, but uh, I've become more and more engaged as I try to consume more of this content. And uh, you know, it really does appeal to me uh, this kind of content and this group of people. And so just to give that definition quickly, the core principles of the intellectual dark web a willingness to engage in conversations with people who have different beliefs and political viewpoints. There's a rejection of identity politics and a recognition that identity politics has become the dominant ideology in mainstream media discourse. There are ideas worth listening to. They're trying to honor the freedom of speech. And 
uh, often people don't want them to share this this speech, share that truth, and, and, and they try to silence them. And so one of the things that we've seen for a lot of these uh, these people is they've had some significant backlash. And just to highlight who some of these people are, if you are interested, uh, it, it is, it's quite a range. There's a couple pictures. This is that original article. Uh, everyone was laughing at this because Joe Rogan showed up and everyone else was dressed very nice and Joe Rogan showed up with uh, a jacket from Alaska. But you know, you're looking good there, Joe. Uh, and uh, a couple other uh, people who you may have be seeing or may uh, be seeing soon because these people have had um, have a sort of an avalanche behind them in success, and every single time they seem to talk, they get more outrage, more press, more media, more people sharing, retweeting about them, and so they have become so prominent uh, in this in this little subsection, this little dark web that people are are engaging content. Uh, the the thing that we've seen, and I think why this has had such a big impact is because we are in this time, this anti-truth era, where people are searching for conversations, looking for especially long-form, honest conversations, discussing, discussing issues that uh, we aren't normally hearing day-to-day -day right now. And uh, so, for example, I think I have, uh, if I pull up here, I got a picture of uh, Jordan Peterson. Uh, he is on the left. Uh, I'm guessing that's, yeah, it's to your left as well, too, and it's always tough on this. Uh, right is Ben Shapiro, and then sitting in the back there, that's uh, that's uh, <laughs> Ruben here, I think Dave Ruben. They have, um, you can see, this, this video is an hour and 41 minutes long. Got another picture uh, here, Joe Rogan, uh, with Brett Weinstein and Heather Hang, who are mentioned in this article as well, too. That's a two-hour and 52-minute conversation. People are engaging with this. People are... Uh, digesting this content even more than what we're seeing in mainstream media. Joe Rogan's viewership is as high uh, as, as CNN, as mainstream media, and people are more engaged with this content because of the conversations they're having, because of the, the format it's in, and the way that we can digest it. And uh, I don't really think that this is gonna stop. And the reason is that this is what the original idea of, of the web was built around. The idea was that internet, the World Wide Web, would create just a, a sort of a utopia, and it was a little bit optimistic to look at that way, but a way to find, uh, to find information, to uh, democratize media, to access information on a scale that we had never had access to before. And uh, that was the original vision of the internet, but a lot of that has fallen through or has fallen apart, especially in the last couple years. And, and so to have this return to civil discourse, to long-form conversations with really open topics that a lot of people are discussing right now, it makes sense that this is the direction uh, we've headed in. And again, to, to bring it back to this, this idea of, of post-truth, uh, it's something that has been, has been needed right now. And what I'm going to do after this little video here, I was going to share some links to some of these guys and some of their videos, uh, but I just think it's, it's such a fascinating thing. Uh, we see, you know, someone, uh, when I pulled up this video here, uh, Jordan Peterson on the left, a Canadian professor who was really unknown until 2016 when he decided that he didn't want to deal with all the gender pronouns here in Canada. Uh, I think there was like 80 different uh, pronouns. He protested it and, and wanted to look at it from uh, a scientific uh, lens of the left. We're all about truth, we're all about facts, especially when it looks, you know, when it comes to something like climate change, we're clamping or say, look at the evidence, look at the evidence. But Jordan Peterson's um, his rebuttal to that was that uh, we don't pay attention to science when it comes to, to it comes to gender, when it comes to this kind of stuff. And uh, he wanted to have he wanted to have a stand, and he had a stand uh, toured throughout Canada, got a ton of backlash, and he's continued that tour today. You can see him showing up on Ruben uh, at Ruben Report here. You see it has almost four million views, and he's he's even though he's had these controversial issue, issues, he considers himself a classic left, a progressive left. But he's sitting over there on the right here with Ben Shapiro, who uh, was formerly the editor of Breitbart News, an editor at Breitbart News. And uh, he is as conservative uh, as you can get in a lot of ways, Republican, uh, supporter of the uh, Republican Party. But yet, even though their ideologies 
in some ways clash so much. They're willing to have these open conversations and not just quick little conversations. You can see an hour 40 and that is what people have embraced so much. We are in a time where there is that outrage culture when someone says, uh, you know, something that used to fly in the past, people jump all over it and attack with it. And I think that's why we have seen some of the success of these, um, you know, these, these populist parties and just the populist political movement is because we're sick of hearing, and I, I put myself in that, we're sick of seeing that backlash. We're sick of the political correctness, and we want to have real honest conversations around these issues that are so binary uh, in day-to-day -day and that so many people attack. So I just, I don't think I have too much else that I really wanted to say uh, about this, but I really wanted to uh, to share some of this, uh, some of this content, share this uh, this idea and and movement that is growing, and whether that's you know people who are uh, part of this and are happy to be part of this and people believe should be part of this, you know, someone like Jordan Peterson, obviously an intellectual, uh, Sam Harris, a neuroscientist sharing uh, his ideas on consciousness. Uh, and then there's some people obviously who uh, maybe aren't so happy that uh, they're up here. And, and so uh, I just really wanted to uh, share this share this conversation that uh, that has been going on and let you do explore that for yourself. Um, if you are engaged, if you've been paying attention to this uh, this idea online and what's happening, shoot me a message because I'd love to have a conversation about it. And uh, I think this is only going to continue this long form content with these open discussions, and it's an important thing. Uh, that I hope does continue. So uh, that's my little video. I did 11 minutes today. Hope everything's going well. I uh, hope that I can uh, get another video and continue building this habit. And I appreciate uh, appreciate you if you're, you're watching this or listening. So uh, have a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you next.